Well, hello and welcome back. It is time once again to try to fix something. And today on the workbench, we're taking a look at a Nintendo Switch OLED. Now, I don't work on a lot of switches. I've worked on a few. Um, fixed a few of the full size of the original switches and some Switch lights. Um, they're not my favorite to work on. But um, this one came up on eBay, so I thought I would, uh, you know, give it a chance. It looked like it was in pretty good shape. So, what the heck, I figured I'll, I'll, uh, I'll give it a try. Probably still not my favorite thing to work on, but it could be interesting. But, um, let's see. Uh, what do we want to look at first? I was, I was looking earlier at the screws on it. The screws don't look like they've been damaged. So, I'm somewhat hopeful that it will uh, it has not been tampered with too much. Let me show you what it's doing. Uh, power button. Oops. Joy-Con, sure. Yeah, not locked very well, is it? Let me just take that off. I think that latch is uh, done for on those. Those can be replaced. Although I'm not sure if those Joy-Cons are any good anyway. Power button does nothing. No signs of life. And let me see what it does. I have looked down in the port. Let me show you. Let me look down in this port. And I don't see anything. You can see that in there. Port doesn't look bad. I mean, not bad at all. I don't see any bent pins. And yeah, look at these. Uh, that, that, that's a little bit worse. And look at the uh, corrosion on that screw. I sure hope this is not liquid damage. And that's where the screws aren't chewed up like it's been, uh, you know, somebody struggled to get it open. Let's look at the ones on the end, maybe on the end rails. So that looks untouched. That looks totally untouched. How about the other end? Yep. Uh, that one there, no, that one has been taken off. You can see the damage on it. Yeah. So maybe somebody has been in here. Let's go and look down. That that looks like corrosion, doesn't it? Yeah, I am afraid. Oh yeah, that rail is just totally corroded away. See the see the little finger contacts down in there. So that's gonna be that's gonna be fun. And well, those can be taken out and cleaned. At least on the original switches, they could be cleaned. All right, let's look back. Let's show you what it's doing um, when, we, when we apply power. Got my USB-C meter here. It only, I'm only, it's only, will only output five volts, so it's not the original power supply. Nine milliamps. Nine milliamps. Now, if I turn it over. nine milliamps so yeah not a whole lot of anything so I do hope there's not liquid damage inside this thing but I'm almost certain there's going to be um, let's get on into it I've never opened one of these before so let's just see if we can get into it can't be that different from the original switch can it some clips holding things in place let me put a screw back in this before I break something oh, at least one of those sides your side ones did have to come out I see it tucks in behind it there 
I see. Let me put one back in there though. Before I break something. Because these things just kind of flop everywhere. breaking the little tiny ribbon cables. Okay, at least now they won't flop around. Alrighty. Well, first glance, I'm not seeing a ton of corrosion anywhere. progress let's see now hmm don't know if I need to get this whole board in my, out in my hands right now let's just take a quick look see if there's any charge on this battery Curious if it's just run totally down. Well, I would say yes, it is very, very dead. Okay. Now, I've seen this in, in the previous iterations of the Switch. For whatever reason, the battery gets totally flat below the threshold, you know, that that this will will charge. Like, if the battery gets too low, uh, the, the charging system built on will just not, you know, will not do anything. It won't try to charge it. There has to be a minimum, I don't know if it's two and a half, three volts, what it is, but there's a minimum voltage at which it, it will, below that it won't, it won't even try. So, that's, I think we are well below that because we are at zero. So I think what I need to do is crank up my power supply, disconnect this battery, and make sure it's still zero once it's dis disconnected. I'm sure it will be though. I'm sure it will be. And I'm going to try to put a little bit of, of power into this battery manually. I don't have a uh, connector. I know some of you that work on these things a lot, they'll make up a, a connector. You know, take a connector off of a, a, a dead switchboard and use that with some you know, wires and have you a convenient way of connecting to it. I don't have that because I don't do that much uh, work on switches. But I need to get a tiny wire in some way 
down in those little blade contacts. And I need to try to apply, um, you know, I'll use my power supply with a current limiting probably like at 20, 30, 40, maybe 50 milliamps or something. Uh, maximum voltage of around 4 volts, 4.2. And let it try to put some charge in this battery slowly. Let me work on that. See if I can at least get a connection into this thing. I have an idea. All right, well, I think I'm ready. Uh, what I've done, I've taken a couple of pieces of uh, solid core copper wire from uh, a Cat5 cable and just flattened out the ends of it to make like a blade type connection to go down in there, if you can see it. I don't know how well it's going to show up. There it goes. To make a contact with the positive and the negative of the battery. And now what I'm going to do, we're going to apply, I've got this uh, supply set up, right now it's putting out a maximum of 3 volts and 20 milliamps. Turn it on, and you can see it charging. I'm going to try to charge it really, really slow, there's no hurry here. Putting 20 milliamps into it. And uh, I'm going to bring it up kind of slow. Let's just see if that gets us any, any further along, maybe, the, maybe the switch will wake up. Um, yeah, I'm trying to be very careful with it. We do not want to overheat the lithium ion battery because they can't explode, but I don't think I'm going to explode this one with 20 milliamps of current. So, yeah, let's let that, you see, you can see the light on there. That's current limiting. So she's in current limiting mode right now. And uh, when this thing gets up to, I don't know, probably 3.7, 3.8 volts, we might be ready to see uh, what it'll do. Well, I have been charging now for a couple of hours. I think it is um, at 20 milliamps. So I decided I'm up over 3.1 volts, almost 3.2. I increase it to 50 milliamps now. So I guess I'm getting impatient. But uh, we're still charging. That battery was completely dead. Well, we've been charging for quite a while. Uh, maybe three hours. I'm not sure. I've lost track of time. But we're still uh, only up to 3.325. Still drawing 50 milliamps. I think I'm going to see if the um, onboard charger will take over at this point. I really don't know if it will or not. Uh, let's find out, though. So let me disable that. And let's just extract this. If I can. We will extract this and this. And let's see. I can do this okay now how much current do we draw yeah, I'm still not seated mm, still nine milliamps not good hmm okay let me hook the uh, power supply back up maybe it's too soon I can't remember the, at what point the onboard charger will take over all right time to check in again on this uh, switch OLED um, I actually left it uh, charging all day while I went to work and it's just now at 3.7 volts so I wonder if it will take over charging now let's find out turn that off Uh, what will it do? Nine milliamps. Got a bad feeling this thing's not going to charge. Hmm. Hmm. Yep. Something's going on. Well, it is the next morning. And I left this charging overnight. I did increase the current to 100 milliamps. And we have made it to 3.8 volts. Which should be really more than enough for this thing to turn on, if it's going to turn on. Um, 
But while I was waiting for it, I got to looking at the, the board under the microscope. And I'd like to show you something there if I could to get the microscope in position. Uh, where, did, where is it? I had not looked at the back of this port. And it has been changed out. I mean, I looked at the uh, outside of the port. You're looking up in there looking for bent pins, and it looked great. But did not realize it has been changed out, and the soldering does not look great. Does not look great. So you can... There goes the notion that this thing had not been opened before. It has definitely been opened, and somebody has tried to fix this thing before. So, let's keep that in mind going forward. Hmm. Right, let's just try. Tell you what, let's just try connecting this battery up and see if it will try to turn on. 3.8 should be enough to, to do something. Okay. Let's see, where's the power button? I think it's this one over here on the far. Far side. Oh, Nintendo logo. Switch logo? There it is. Oh, and then we have an error message. Uh, error code 2101-0001, which I seem to recall, uh, according to uh, my good friend Josh over at uh, Micro, Micro Mage Repair, I get the name right, Micro Mage Repair, um, that is an error related to M92T36. So... At least our screen is good. You know, I, I, there for a while it had so, so much smudges on. I wasn't sure if it was a broken screen or not, but the screen looks beautiful. Okay, so the port is questionable, and the M92T36 is questionable. And where is the M92T36? Is it on the other side of the board? Hmm. Okay. Never worked on one of these. I have to find it. Oh, the fan is running. Fan is running. Okay. All right. That's progress. I did finally get that PCB out, and I did find our old friend M92T36 on the back of the board. I'm not sure if you can read the part number. Yeah, you can see it. Uh, let's take a look around this chip. Everybody's favorite chip, because it always fails. But at least we can get them. And I have checked. I do have some uh, from, well, years ago when I was working on switches. I hadn't worked on one in a while. So I'm in continuity mode. 
Let's just check some of these capacitors because that's ground on that side. That shouldn't be. That's ground. Okay. And this group of three over here, this should be ground. Yeah. That's not, oh, that's all right. Oh, that's six and a half ohms. Six and a half ohms right there on that one, about here. No? I'll check that one. So a six and a half ohm short on that one in the middle. Um, so yeah, M92 T36 needs to be replaced. It doesn't look like it's been touched. And just looking around this board, the back side of the board, it looks like nothing's been touched. Uh, I'm sure there's some solder if we look around the, there's the back of that USB-C port. Which is sitting a little bit crooked. Probably tell there. Uh, and that port's a little bit melted. I don't have any of these ports. Because I think it's different from the regular switch. Um, I was kind of hoping to be able to use that, reuse that port. But I don't know if it'll survive another uh, removal. Because I would like to take it off and see, you know... Freshen up that stuff underneath there, but we are going to need this M92 T36 first. So maybe we'll just start there and see what happens then. Well, our M92 T36 has been changed out, and I think that went pretty well. Uh, I remember the first time I changed one of these things out. Um, I, I blew components all over the place. <laughs> I mean, uh, too much airflow, and I don't know. I did a lot of things wrong, but that went a lot, be a lot better. That looked good. Um, I really just want to see now if it will turn on without the error message. That's all I've done. I've got the board just kind of sitting in the housing here. I didn't even put any screws in it. No heat sink on it. Uh, I think, though, if you should be able to turn on. There we go. Ah, no error message. All right. Excellent. I'm happy with that. Now, I am not brave enough to plug in a charger into that port and possibly do some more damage. I'm just not sure about that port. Uh, but I did want to see it turn on and not have that error message before I went any further. But I think I am going to pull that port um, and redo it. I don't have one to replace it with, or I probably would. But, um, yeah, Let's see if I can get it to shut down. Uh, power. What is it there? No. Let's 
been a while since I've done one of these. Do you hold it? No. Press the power button. No. It's been a while. It's been a while. Press and hold it. Doesn't it come up? Yeah, we can give you the option. Power options. Turn off. I do still have a switch. The, like, the very first switch I ever fixed, I kept it. I still have it. I don't seem to ever play with it, but I do have it. Uh, okay. Let's see if we can get this board back out and get this port pulled off and maybe maybe get it turned and uh, lined up a little bit better and you know something I can feel confident about uh, plugging 15 volts into it. came off pretty good but as you can see hopefully let me get it in focus a little bit better there's been some repair work under that port and there's a huge glob of uh, solder mask so apparently somebody lifted a pin and I'm not sure how that port ever sat down flat or if it was flat with that much stuff Let's see if I can get this board out of the holder I'll give you a profile view of it yeah is it showing up there you can see it a huge glob of solder mask under there anyway so I feel like I'm gonna need to clean that up a little Get zoom back out a little. Yeah, it looks like it was just the one pad that was loose. I am a little concerned though when I go to clean that solder mask off, it may take that pad right off because it's stuck to it, it looks like. Yeah. Let me look at the just let me look at the bottom side of this port. Okay. Well uh, you can see a solder mask on that pin right there. Doesn't look like it was ever tin, does it? So I think we can still use this port. Nope. Nope. That pin has popped out of place. Can you see it down in there? Yeah. So I need a port. Yay. Okay. Well, let me, I'll get one of those ordered or several ordered if I'm going to be working on these things. I have some regular ports, but my understanding is it's not the same as a regular switch port or a switch light. Um, but I haven't looked myself, but I'm, that's what I understand. They, they do sell them as a separate item online. But yeah. Okay. Well, let me work on this. Well, I'll have a port ordered. And I'll be trying to clean this up a little while we, while we wait for that to arrive. So the magic of editing, it'll all happen real quick.
Well, our port has been replaced, and we're ready to see if this thing will charge now. And I would love to tell you that that went easy, but I struggle with that. It's been at least a year since I've done a uh, switch port, and so yeah, that wasn't that was not fun. But I need I need to do more of my guests to get some practice. But I do hate switches. But anyway, let's just see if this thing will charge. If I can get my uh, meter in the shot here. Let's just see if it will now charge. Oh, I see something that looks like it rebooted there. Okay. And we went to zero. What are we doing? Nothing. This is not encouraging. About the other way around. Oh. I bet it would help if I hooked the battery up. Yeah. I bet it would help if I connected the battery. Try that again. Ooh, 0.47 amps. And are we turning on? Oops. And I just knocked that off. Mm. I don't have any screws in it. So, yeah. I think it kind of needs this. Stay there. Reconnect the battery. And then reconnect the charger. Of course, it's just 5 volts. That's all that's available to it right here. 0.47 amps. Are we turning on? Oh, we have the charging icon in the corner for just a moment there. I guess it's rebooting. There it goes. It's coming up. Yeah. 1.47 amps at 5 volts. And we are charging. If you can, um, we get it in the picture. Yeah, we are charging. Excellent. Uh, I guess I need to flip it over and see if it if it charges the other direction. Just a second. So unplug it, rotate, plug it back in. We're charging. Charging in both directions. Excellent. Okay. What else do I need to do to this switch? Um, I think I'm going to replace both these rails. I did buy some when I was ordering this port. Uh, there was corrosion down in there. I think I cleaned it pretty well, but when I was ordering the port, I noticed that uh, they had these rails, so I think I'm just going to replace those rails. And I did notice... I don't know if I can, this... Uh, let me see if I can find it here. This switch came with a dock and I'll have to insert a picture here um, I took a picture down in here looking at that port inside there where it mates um, and it is in bad shape uh, several of the pins the pins that were damaged on on this port are damaged there uh, they look like it's mis misshaped and melted so I've ordered a port I've got a port here um, that I hope will fit. This is for a regular switch. I don't know that this is this is for a regular switch. This is a switch OLED dock. I don't know that they're any different. We're going to find out though. So I've got that to put in there. And hopefully we'll have a fully working healthy switch. Hopeful.
well our uh, switch OLED is fully reassembled and I need to confirm that it will charge off an official charger and charge to 15 volts I have an official charger going through you can see it back there going through my USB-C meter we're gonna plug it in there and you can see it charging 14.88 yeah, I think that's right. Will she, will she turn on now? As soon as I find the power button. There, there's the power button. Kind of resist. There we go. 14.8. All right, we are charging. 45%. And if I flip this over, oh, wake back up. I guess I didn't, I didn't actually log into it, did I? Now, if I unplug it, flip it over, yep, we charge. 14.9 volts at 0.78 amps. All right, we are charging on both sides of the uh, cable. So the last thing to do is to check the dock, but we've got to fix the dock first. So that's our next thing. Well, I left this switch uh, OLED charging overnight, and it, uh, I think it's fully charged now. Yes, it is indeed. Okay, so I think I'm good with this switch. I put some new Joy-Cons on. The ones that came with it uh, were in rough shape, and uh, one of them was like a, a cheap you know, aftermarket, not an original. So I got some original uh, Joy-Cons. Uh, I think we are through with this. Set this to the side where maybe it won't fall and let's move on to this if we could this is the dock that came with it and i have never opened one of these up before never needed to so it looks like it does take the um, tri-wing screwdriver which i still have out because we need to get to that dock port. All right, now, do you, oh yeah, spring loaded, but it's coming out. Don't lose the springs. Don't lose the tiny screws. All right, now, is that the same? I guess I can let these screws drop out here. Is that the same as what I have? Get some light on over here. little plastic cover piece here let me get this out of the way without tearing it well it does look to be very very similar if not identical like I said this um, the port I bought said it was for a for a regular switch did not say it was for the OLED version and I simply didn't know if there was a difference Ribbon cable loose. Okay. And this is spring loaded as well, I see. Hmm. Oh, wait a minute. 
the one I've got is damaged. I wonder if this is a pull because it, the the plastic is busted there. Yeah. See how it's supposed to be made and so that's not great. Is it busted? That just doesn't look right. I don't suppose I can transfer that part over. I don't think so. Let's see if I can make this work. All right, well, our dock is fully reassembled, and I think we're ready to test this out and see if it will charge and if it will give us video. Let's find out. Hey, I see charge. Uh, I guess we have to turn it on. There's no video right now. Let me hit the, hit the power button, see what we get. Oh, there we go. And she docks. All right, I call that a success. Uh, we are back fully working. Well, I hope you enjoyed that one. Thought it was somewhat interesting, educational, or entertaining, any of the above. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. And I will see you in that very next repair. So long for now.